So I thought we'd have a look at the general performance of the 8-core iMac Pro. So uh, this is the unit. It's an 8-core, 32 gig of RAM and 1 terabyte SSD. It's the base unit. It was the first one that came available, which is why I jumped on it. Um, so benchmarks on everything. So I'll, I'll show you some of the general performance as well. So let's have a quick look at the specification of this one. It's a 2017 iMac Pro. It's got the quad-core 3.2 gigahertz Xeon W. 32 gig of RAM and a one terabyte SSD. Um, so what I'll do is I'll also show you how it performs against my 2017 quad core i7 iMac. Um, in fact, let's have a look and see which one that is. There you go. So this is a 2017 unit. It's the quad core 4.2 gigahertz i7. Uh, it's got 64 gig of RAM in it and I think a 512 gig SSD in there. So I'll, I'll do some performance comparisons with that and you can have a look and see what the what the performance looks like. So firstly, let, let's have a look at some of the Geekbench results. So I've done a, a summary table here that you can have a look at. You can see the iMac Pro at the top, so it's showing a multi-core uh, score, which is pretty good, 34,000. And if you compare it to the i7 just below it, the 2017 unit, you'll see that it's quite a substantial um, jump up. Um, which is what you'd expect to be fair. And I've also included the current MacBook Pro as well, the 2.9 gigahertz one that I've got. Um, you can also see how it compares to my um, 2015 unit, which uh, I don't have anymore, but uh, that was quite a good workhorse that I had. It's quite interesting looking at the phone performance there, isn't it? It's not that far off the iMac. Um, yeah, anyway, so let's go and look at uh, some of the real world performance. So the first thing I was gonna look at um, is say Windows uh, virtualization. So running virtual machines is probably my primary use for this. I, I do a ton of stuff around Windows Server and all kinds of things. But uh, So let's have a look at my normal working environment. So this is just a Windows 10 machine. It's running in parallels. I'll show you the config. I've got 16 cores allocated at the moment and 16 gig of RAM. Uh, I don't normally have it that high. It's just I've been running some stuff that requires a fair bit of grunt. Of course, it's not 16 cores, it, it's eight cores allocated with hyperthread running. Um, I sometimes get asked, what do you lose through virtualization? Well, if we have a look at the Geekbench um, scores here, that's the Geekbench scores running in Windows. And uh, what we should be able to see is the Geekbench scores running in Mac OS. So you can see there is actually, of course, a loss um, to the hypervisor and it's just over 10%, uh, which is kind of reasonable, it seems to be there the number that kind of occurs across the virtualization platforms. But let's have a look at the performance anyway. So let's fire up this machine. We'll have a look and, and see what it looks like. There you go, it's ready to go. So let's log in and have a look and see what the actual performance is like on this. I will say while I'm recording on QuickTown, by the way, it does seem to hit, hit on the performance. It, it does seem a lot snappier when it's uh, not recording. But anyway, uh, there's my Windows 10 machine. If you wanna have a look at see the spec that I've applied to it. Here we go. So it's got your 16 virtual processors showing up in one uh, socket. We've got 16 gig of RAM allocated. Um, yeah, so it's a very capable machine. So, so let's have a look at some of the general uh, performance. Let me just go with the team. So let's fire up Office here. There's our Excel, Word, all our videos running. Um, there we go. So you can see it's actually very, very usable. It's very, very quick. Now, like I say, I wouldn't normally allocate um, that amount of resources. Now, one of the things I have noticed on this, by the way, is the amount of time it takes to do things like snapshots. It seems way, way quicker than the i7. So to give you an example, I can uh, take a snapshot of the machine here. If I can spell, there we go. Just done in next to no time. Same, same with restoring as well. Not that I've made any changes, but uh, you'll see my point.
Now, I, I don't normally uh, fire these machines up from fresh. I normally just suspend them. So let's have a look at these suspend performance as well. So I'm just going to close that down. There we go, and that's done. The opposite side, of course, to the suspension is firing the machine up again. So let's uh, do that. There we go, and it's ready to go. So, so it is really, really quick. Is it quicker than the i7? Yes, it is. Um, enough to make a difference to my day? Well, not doing this sort of stuff. Obviously, it doesn't matter that much. But um, yeah, so let's have a look at things like the drive performance, because that's actually quite impressive on these units. So I'm just going to fire up that Blackmagic disk speed test. Like I say, it, um, recording the screen like this, uh, it does seem to impact on the performance. So just bear that in mind. Uh, also, I've got another 27-inch uh, uh, screen plugged in next to it. So let's just run it on the desktop. Select a bigger file, kick that off. This is a fully encrypted drive as well. It's quite impressive stuff. Let's have enough of that. Right, so I have done um, a brief comparison video which kind of shows you um, encoding of a, a video in, on the i7 and on the iMac Pro, just to give you an idea of you know, what, what it does in terms of pure grunt. Um, if you want to have a look at that, I'll, I'll tag this onto the end. I've speeded it up, obviously, because no one wants to watch a video encoding. Um, but my general impressions of the machine is the 8-core the unit is everything I wanted the i7 to be and more. It's... Um, I haven't really noticed any kind of outright, outright performance increases in doing things like video or, or my virtualization. What I have noticed is that when I load the machine, whether it's doing uh, exporting 4K video or anything like that, is the machine remains usable. Um, I wasn't getting that on my i7. If I was processing, say, 4K video, what I'd often do is leave it running and then switch to my laptop for a little while. I'm not doing that anymore. I, I can switch i can leave it running and i can also have parallels running for my office stuff at the same time so it just seems far more scalable to me now the 18 core ones a slightly different story um so i'll, I'll do a, a performance comparison on that shortly once i've finished getting it all set up in fact it's running right now um yeah so let's come back and have a look at that so you can see the two encodes going on here. The timer's in minutes, by the way. This is obviously speeded up quite a lot. Top right-hand corner is the 27 iMac Pro, and the main screen is the 2017 um, quad-core i7. So you can see that the uh, Pro has finished this in 15 minutes and 20 seconds, and the quad-core i7 in 23 minutes, 48 seconds. So it's quite a, a significant difference from um, the actual handbrake conversion there. I will say handbrake seems to use all the cores. Um, not a lot of other apps seem to. It seems to uh, be restricted to three or four cores. But yeah, you, you can certainly see the difference in the, the raw grunt there. So that's not a particularly large video. I think it's only a couple of gig, but uh, it's a re reasonable, reasonable comparison. Overall, well, I think as a workstation, the 8-core is fantastic. It, it basically just speeds up my workflow constantly. Um, so I'm, I'm very happy with it. Um, I think it just adds an all-round better performance to, to the i7. And like I say, it seems to scale better. So when I'm exporting video, for example, or, or when I'm doing uh, other stuff, I can carry on using the machine. Whereas actually on my i7, sometimes it would get a bit bogged down when I'm doing such things. But anyway, um, once the 18 core unit is up and running uh, properly, we'll do the same comparison and uh, we'll see what that looks like.